In this video, we're going to walk through the software side of the Ponogachi build. We're going to flash a micro SD card with the Ponogachi OS, create a configuration file while the card is still connected to the PC, boot the Ponogachi, and then configure it further using Ethernet over USB for the purpose of being able to SSH into it. Also, we're going to look at some of the underreported and even dangerous capabilities of the Ponogachi and the accompanying parameters. Now, if you follow the current instructions on the Ponogachi website, it will not work, so don't. And the reason is because WaveShare no longer manufactures version 2 of the 2.13 inch e-ink display that is referenced in the instructions on the Ponogachi website. Moreover, the stable release version of the Ponogachi OS doesn't support V3 of the display. And if you don't win Google Roulette, you're going to go down a rabbit hole containing some very obtuse, unworkable instructions. Thankfully, the solution I found is simple. Download the latest beta, v1.5.6 beta 2. Update, I am no longer thankful as the solutions are never as simple as they seem. While the beta does solve the display problem, it introduces a dozen more. The real solution is to use v1.5.5 fix, links in the description. Use Belina Etcher to select the version 1.5.5 fix image file. Carefully select your target micro SD card, especially if you have something like a Surface Pro that uses a card as hard drive storage, and flash the image. Once it validates, unplug the micro SD card and then plug it back in and navigate to the root directory. Create a config.toml file and copy the code from the website and paste it in. Here you can name your Ponogachi. In this section, you can add the SSID of your own wireless network so that you don't pwn yourself. If you're following the previous video tutorial, you'll need to edit the display parameter to read 3. Plug the micro SD card into your Ponogachi. At this point, we can rejoin the instructions on the Ponogachi website already in progress. 1. Start by connecting the micro USB cable to the data port of your Ponogachi's RP0W. Then connect the other end of that cable to your computer. 2. If your Ponogachi has already been booted up at least once before, after a few seconds, you will see a new Ethernet interface on your host computer. If you have never booted your Ponogachi before, it will take a few minutes to boot up and slash or become visible or responsive. Do not interrupt your Ponogachi during this process. That extra time it takes to boot the first time you turn your Ponogachi on? It's because it is generating its RSA keys. If you interrupt this process, the generated keys may be corrupted. 3. You'll need to configure it with a static IP address. IP 10.0.0.1 Netmask 255.255.255.0 Gateway 10.0.0.1 DNS, if required, 8.8.8.8, .8 or whatever. 4. Fruit bats and large Skip a bit, brother. 5. Congratulations. You should now be able to connect to your unit using SSH. If it's too early to celebrate because step 2 didn't work, follow these instructions. Fire up View Network Connections. Your Ponogachi should show up as a USB gadget. If it doesn't, you are probably missing the drivers. Find the RNDIS drivers or download them for free from my site. Links in the description. If you have the drivers installed and it still won't show up, double check that the USB cord you're using supports data. Some only do power. Once you've resolved the issue, continue on with the aforementioned step 3. Let's SSH into the device using PuTTY. The IP we use is 10.0.0.2 even though we configured 10.0.0.1 in network connections. Why is that? Answer in the comments. Accept the error message if necessary and use the default password Raspberry. From the official instructions, The default password is Raspberry. You should change it as soon as you log in for the first time by issuing the password command and selecting a new and more complex passphrase. Okay, your Ponogachi is ready to go, but what does it do? What is it capable of? First, I recommend studying anatomy of a Ponogachi face. Next, you'll want to study the default settings in default.toml, which you can override by appending settings to the config.toml file. Of note is that dauth is set to true, which is legally problematic. Ponogachis by default send dauth packets to devices to force them to disconnect, with the hope that the devices will reconnect so that Ponogachis can witness the handshake process. Can Ponogachis obtain WPA crackable material without sending the auth packets? Yes. They can wait around until the handshake process occurs naturally. 
They don't even need to capture a full handshake, and apparently sometimes a single packet is enough, even without clients. Ponagachis can send association frames directly to the APs to attempt to force them to divulge the PMK ID. Here we're editing the config.toml file so that the Ponagachi doesn't deauth. Next, study the section of the site titled Files to Know on your Ponagachi, notably the location of the updated config.toml file and where the handshakes are stored. What else can your Ponagachi do? Well, by default, it's partially opted into a baby Skynet called Pongrid. With initial settings, it will beacon its existence to the Pongrid server and send the following data. The cryptographic identity of the unit, generated at first boot and used for authentication. The output of the uname may command on the unit used to determine the type of hardware. You can fully opt in by editing the config file. This will allow you to participate in the Pongrid community's scoreboards and contribute data to the country level statistics seen here. Pongrid doesn't collect cryptographic material, just the names of the network's pwned, BSSIDs and ESSIDs. Alternately, you can fully opt out of Pongrid. What else can your Ponagachi do? It can also function as a crypto pager complete with inbox. By using the PWN Grid API, and internet connectivity of course, your unit is able to exchange end-to-end -end encrypted messages with other units enrolled in the grid. Each message is encrypted on your Raspberry with a recipient RSA public key before being sent. Messages are addressed via the cryptographic fingerprints of the Ponagachi. What else can your Ponagachi do? Perhaps the coolest, cutest, craziest thing it can do is make friends and conspire with other Ponagachis. Multiple units within close physical proximity can talk to each other. Over time, two or more Ponagachi units trained together will learn to cooperate by dividing the available channels among them for optimal Ponage. An extensive library of default and community plugins make the Ponagachi capable of so much more. Too much to go over in this video. I recommend studying the site as there is important information scattered throughout. In this video we tackled the software side of things and discussed some of the most important capabilities of the Ponagachi. In the following video we'll go over some additional tips, tricks and troubleshooting. Thanks for watching. Bonus, you can get a stripped down web UI by going to Ponagachi or whatever your Ponagachi's name is dot local colon 8080 and using username and password change me. You've noticed I've created a dark mode Gurlagachi and you can too. Links to the blog with the instructions in the description.